Recording in progress. Right, so I cannot minimize Zoom. Oh, that's right, I don't have to. Okay. So let's kind of refresh our memory as to where we were. What we what we have been what we've been able to do is um, if we're given two angles. We can get all we can we can get all the angles and all the sides. So with two angles, we can get all the angles. I take that back. Take that back. I, I retract that. That is not true. With an angle and a side, we can get all the angles in this, but not with just uh, not with not just uh, But what if we're given? just two sides and no angles. Can we do that? What do you think? Can we do it? Would it be up there if we couldn't? No, it would not. It would not. All right. So um, let's use some magic ball here a little bit. I know I want to have, I'm going to right over here so Noel can see me. So A, B, and C, the capitals are our angles. And then little a, little b, and little c are our sides. And what we're given in this problem is we're given side B, because remember, the side is opposite the angle. So this is side B. And then... This is going to be side A. So side B is four and side A is seven. So, oh, and the other, I, I know one more thing here just by looking at the picture. What is it? But there's a 90 degree. There is a 90 degree angle and that is angle C is 90 degrees. So we know that. Okay. So any thought as to what we might want to do here? Amanda, got any thoughts? Um, well, I guess it's kind of obvious that A and B would be split somewhere between 90 because the prime is a limited degree. That's true. So, so we know if we solve A or we solve B, that the other one's just going to be have to subtract it from 90. That's pretty. Hey, what's up? Do we want to? Yes. Oh, okay. Your phone's in here. Oh, oh, that's terrible. Oh, my God. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> you, you stole her phone, Juliana? <laughs> oh, you didn't mean to. A likely story. <laughs> a likely story. You're probably hacking it all weekend. No, I'm, I'm, I'm just, okay, right. All right. So that is true. Once we find out either A or B, we can find out the other one easily by the complementary angle theorem. But we don't have either one of those. There's something else we can do here. Oh, and everybody knows it. I'm going to go for the magic bowl again. I'm going to give somebody else a chance here. What did it say? There's something else we can do here. It's all right within your power. Kalani. Uh, Pythagorean, theorem. Pythagorean theorem. How about the Pythagorean theorem, right? I got two sides. I can find the third side. So I know that Pythagorean theorem, A squared plus B squared equals C squared. So I have A, which is seven squared, plus B, four squared, is going to equal the hypotenuse squared. So I have 49 plus 16. What's that? 65 yeah. equals C squared. So C squared equals 65. I, I don't, that's not a perfect square. And, and, and four can't go into it evenly. And nine can't, nine? No. Something times something is 65. What, what's it? Five times 13. Eight, nine, 13. 13. Yes. Oh, okay, well, that doesn't help us either, right? 
All right, so I'm thinking that C is simply equal to the square root of 65. That work for everybody? Yeah. Yeah? Okay, so let's put that. We know that C is equal to the square root of 65. And here comes the tricky part. Square root 65. How am I going to use this information to find an angle? Well, I'll give you a minute to see if you can think it through. How can I use this information to find an angle? I'll give you, I'll give you one hint. That's your hint. So good, Helen. That's your hint. How am I going to do this? He finds the six pack. Uh, yeah, kind of, kind of. You're almost there. No, no volunteers. No thoughts. Well, so Lauren here says find the six pack. We don't really need to find the whole six pack, but let's say. I want to find um, sine of angle A. So sine of angle A, sine is opposite over hypotenuse, correct? Yes? So sine of angle A is going to be um, opposite 7 over radical 65. 7 over radical 65. Are we okay with that? Okay, is, it, is this leading anybody to figure out? What, okay, what are we going to do, Allison? How? What, what, what? No, no, no. You're 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 kind of getting close. Not sure. Anybody want to take a guess? No guesses. What? What do you think? Multiply both sides by radical sixty-five. That's still not going to help us very much. It's a good thought. It's a good thought. Yes. Divide both sides by sine. Divide both sides by sine. You, you mean like, like this? So that crosses out? You're not allowed to do that. No, the, the argument has to stick with the uh, with the trigonometric function. Okay. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna say, well, if this is an angle and this is a number. <gasps> Oh, the um, negative one thingy. The negative one thingy. We're gonna we're gonna find the inverse. So inverse sine of seven over radical sixty five is gonna equal the angle. Did everybody see this? Inverse sine is gonna tell us what the angle is. So if I know what the sine number is, so let's let's see if we can't do that on the calculator here. Open up the calculator. And uh, you all those fine. So I'm gonna go inverse sine, second sine, and I'm gonna go uh, my my argument is seven divided by the square root of sixty-five. Uh, 1.05. I'm thinking that I'm in radians, not degrees. Let's see. My mode. Yeah, I'm in radians. I got to change my, my, my mode to degrees. So I'm just going to go right back up here and copy it. 
So this is a 60.25 angle. Angle A is 60.25 degrees. So angle A, 60.25. So I know angle A here is 60.25. That means angle B is 29.75 by, by doing this subtraction. So if I have the sides, if I have two of the sides, I know I can find the third side. And since the trigonometric functions are simply ratios of the sides of a right triangle, then I can find out what the inverse trig, what the inverse um, uh, a, a trig function is, and it gives me the angle. So. Try it. Try it with a buddy. Two sides. See if you can find all, solve the triangle. A, B, C, A, B, C. Anybody need a picture of this? Yeah. <laughs> 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 I was going to say, how are we doing? That's good. Right. Right, great. Excellent. One second. Yes. Oh, okay. Good. Yes. Do we know that's just getting what this looks like? We do know that is a right angle. Yes, we do know that. That's a good right. question. If it wasn't, then we really couldn't solve it. Yeah. So that is a right angle right there. This is a Writing, yes. Yeah, yeah. And then it's where it's two. Oh, it's not. You're going to find that yeah. the There you go. Do it. Is it the scale? Probably not. Yeah, no, it's probably okay. just, just a picture. Yeah, exactly. 
Okay. Yeah. 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 I don't I don't I don't know. I don't I don't I so I'm going to start if I have two sides. Yes, please. I'll, I'll come over. Yeah. 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 Opposite over adjacent. Opposite over adjacent. Sorry, sorry. Opposite over hypotenuse. And opposite. Right? No. No. The value is the hypotenuse. Depends on which angle you want to find. No. If you want to find A, then you can have the opposite. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. If you can find angle A, then it's yeah. that. That makes sense. Yeah. So I'm going to label these angles here. I'll call this one A and this one B. And, and it doesn't really matter which one's which. It also doesn't matter whether the diagram looks to scale or not. It's diagrams just to kind of help you get an idea of what you're doing here. So if I want to find uh, angle A, I, I like to use the sine function. Well, first I need to find out what is, what is side C. So I need to find out what is the hypotenuse. So I'm going to go uh, 5 squared plus 9 squared equals C squared. So I have 25 plus 81 equals C squared. That's C squared equals 106. Any any perfect squares in 106? No. No? Okay. So then C is equal to radical 106. So I'll write that over here on my diagram. The square root of 106. Now, you know, that looks like kind of a big number, right? But the square root of 100 is just 10, right? So, so I have like a 5, 9, and a little bit bigger than 10. That, that, makes, that makes some sense. So then I'm going to say, okay, well, sine of angle A would be equal to opposite, that would be nine over the square root of 106. Or I could go sine of angle B is equal to five over the square root of 106. Everybody follow me here? Or I could do cosine of angle A, now that would be cosine of angle A would be five over the square root of 106. I could do cosine of angle B, and that would be um, nine over the square root of 106. Or I could even be like really clever. Well, this is interesting. I could have done this differently to begin with. I could say tangent of angle A, well, that would be equal to opposite over adjacent. That would be equal to nine over five. Everybody see what I just did here? Tangent would be nine over five, yes? Or I could say tangent of angle B 
would be five over nine. And in fact, I could have started with that to find my angles. And then and then use the, those angles to find the, the size of the hypotenuse. You, should I say that again? Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it that way. Let's just take a whole different approach here, just for the heck of it. So if tangent of angle A is equal to nine over five, then what I know, I'm gonna go inverse tangent of nine divided by five is equal to 60.95. So I now know angle A. We can follow what I just did there. Okay, so angle A is 60.95. 60.95, which means that angle C is 90 degrees, we know that. And that means angle B is equal to 29.05 degrees. And I already knew that side A was nine and that side B was five. Let's say I just have this aversion to the Pythagorean theorem, which I don't, I actually like the Pythagorean theorem. But let's say I don't like the Pythagorean theorem. Well, I could take this information I have right here and I could say, I'm gonna kind of write it over here. I could say, uh, sine of, uh, of A is equal to opposite nine over C. I know that A is equal to 60.95, so I could go sine of 60.95 is equal to nine over C. So I could say C times sine 60.95 is equal to nine. Or I could say C is equal to nine divided by sine 60.95. So I'm just doing a bunch of different algebra things here. So if I say C is equal to nine divided by sine 65, so nine, divided by sine of 60.95, I get C is equal to 10.295. Is that what you got using the Pythagorean theorem? Yeah. Yep. Same. same on, same up. So all these different ways you can do it. Let's just pause here and, and, and get a question. No, everybody's pretty good. Want to do one more? Yeah. Let's do one more. So any any of these ways right here would have got me to the angle that I wanted, A or B. Any one of these ways would, would have done that. Well, let's let's try one more. Oh, you know what? Let's put this up first. Um I would write this down, or I would take a picture of it, or I can send it out to you, I'll do that. I'll send it out, right? If we are trying to find angles, we use either the complementary angles theorem, or we use inverse trig functions like we were just doing here. That's how we find angles. If we're trying to find sides, we use the Pythagorean theorem, or we use regular trig functions, which is like I did right here. I'll, I'll send this out to everybody because this is a very helpful um, guide. All right, so let's, uh, oh, here we go. So, um, you know what? We're going to get up and do these on the board. That's what we're going to do. That's what we're going to do. Yeah. Okay. So this one here, I'm going to have a side and an angle, and this one here, I have two sides. So let's uh, let me let's let's divide this group up here into some nice groups. 
and we'll do the, some work on the board. So that's a great idea. So let's go groups of four and let's populate randomly. Add. Who are we missing? We're missing Noel, right? Mm -hmm. That's all we're missing, I think, right? All right, so Anna Sophia, yeah, I'm going to take you, move you, move you over here. So I got four groups. One, two, three, four. Pretty good? Okay, one, two, three, go. Make sure you know your group, and then I'll put your prop back up. Okay, so we got the problems there. Let's um you probably can't see the answers. Maybe you can. No, because the board's over. Let's see. There you go. Okay. Um, all right. So once again, this is this is really gonna help you. To, to know what tools to use to, to solve a triangle. Because what we're going to move to, um, uh, let me just make a note to, to e email this out to everybody. So, um, tools to use for triangle. By Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna now apply this to some actual problems. I've talked about the guys in the orange vest, right? Looking on the street, right? Yeah, this is this is what this is what they're doing. Yeah, we can do this problem. Finding the width of a river. So this guy over here um, does not want to get wet, but he wants to know how wide the river is. And one way he could do it, he could take a tape measure, stick it in his mouth, and 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 you know stop put one end of it here and then swim across and then find out what the width of the river is. But he he doesn't want to get wet, or he doesn't want to die because the river is flowing too fast or whatever. You know. I once went backpacking. Anybody ever go backpacking? Yeah, backpacking. I once went backpacking. I was, I was probably not, not too much older than you. Uh, it was when I was in college. And um, we hiked into a rainforest and had to cross a river. And, um, and, and um, of course, what do you think it does in a rainforest? It rains. it rains, yeah, yeah. So we were we were in there camping, and and and, and it was just like two or three days of just nonstop rain. And when we went to hike back out, the river had swollen so much we we couldn't cross it. It was rather scary. Yeah, it was scary. It was a little bit scary. Yeah, yeah. I don't remember what we did, but clearly I survived because <laughs> here I am. We probably did something stupid because we were like 18, 19, 20 years old. All right. Surveyor can measure the width of a river by setting up a transit, that's this point right here, at point C on one side of the river and taking a siding of a point A on the other side. So he, he's got a little stick and he sticks in the ground right here at C and he sees a little bush over here on the other side of the river at A and then he sets himself up so that he's made, a, there's a right angle between him and C and A. Everybody see that? Yes? Now, he can measure the distance from C to where he is because it's on the same side of the river and he doesn't have to get wet to do that. And that happens to be 300 meters. And then he takes this device and he, he first looks at his point, his stick that he set up on this side of the river. And then he's looking through the little window where sight thing and he and he angles it till he can see the spot a on the other side of the river and the angle that makes is a 25 degree angle i'm going to pause right here i want to make sure you can visualize what we're doing is there a question i'm going to repeat this 
No, we're all totally clear on what he's doing here. Yeah. Again? Um. Wait, so is he trying to find the width or the how deep it is? The width, not how deep it is. So, Amanda, I want to know how far it is from you to Anna Sophia, okay? But I don't really feel like uh, uh, walking the distance, right? Okay. So I stand right here, and I have a thing that, that, that points right at you, right? And there's a right angle from you to Anna Sophia. Are you okay with that? Yeah. Okay. So I'm looking with this device at you, and then I turn my device until I get to Anna Sophia, and I find out what angle that made right there. Okay. Now I measure the distance from me to you, but I wanna know how far it is from you to Anna Sophia. So with the angle and knowing this distance, I can figure that out. Oh, okay. Yeah. You figure, yeah, okay, all right. So how are we gonna do that? Well, this is kind of cool. So I'm gonna erase this. Oh no, I can't. I gotta work over over here because uh, there's a well continuing. Let's do it over here. So when you're doing these word problems, there will be a word problem on the test. There will be more than one. The test is really gonna be word problems. So here I am. And I am at, at uh, they're calling this point B. This is me. And over here on the same side of the river is, uh, is point C. And that's my little stick. And then there's the flowing river. Now let's make it river colored. Here's the flowing river. And on the other side of the river, making a nice right angle here is point A. So can you see I have a triangle here? Everybody see the triangle? And I measure with my device that this is 25 degrees. I know this is 90 degrees because it's straight across the river. And I know that the distance from my stick to where I'm standing is 300 meters. Solve the, solve the triangle. We're just gonna solve the triangle. I'm trying to find side B. I'm trying, because here's angle B. Here's, here, here's, here's angle B, here's side. I'm trying to find side B. So what you're gonna find is that in a lot of these word problems, tangent is gonna be a good friend. Because I know that tangent of 25 degrees is equal to psi B divided by adjacent, which is 300. Uh, I'm gonna stop right there. Can everybody see that this, that this is true? Are we okay with this? We go. Right. So, so now I'm just going to use some trigonometry. Or well, first, I'm going to use my algebra and multiply both sides by 300. So I have that cancels out, and I get b is equal to 300 tan 25 degrees. Calculator. 300. Tan 25, 139.89. So this distance here, side B, which is what I'm looking for, 139.89 meters. Problem solved, and I didn't get wet. Pretty neat. Pretty neat. I told you what the project's going to be, right? Yeah. No, yeah, yeah. the project. We're going to measure the height of the cross. Uh, I, I know uh, of the. Um, Is that part of I haven't figured it out yet. Oh, yeah. I haven't figured it out, but it's definitely going to be a project. We're definitely going to do that. Yeah, we're going to measure the height of the cross. And, and you know, of course, you're not going to be able to climb up there and drop a tape measure down. You know, you're going to have to do it with do trigonometry and angles. And 
pretty neat. Yes. Um, how are we going to set the proportions for that? You're going to figure it out. Okay. Do we get a determine the proportion? What? Do we get a determine like our own proportions? Or yeah, I'm going to give you a tape measure. I'm going to give you something that'll measure angles. Yeah. No, yeah, oh, it's like totally great project. Yeah. Um. So because we only needed to find B, we're not going to find the hypotenuse of the triangle, right? Yeah. Sure. If they were asking us to find the hypotenuse, then we would. But they just wanted to know how how far is it to cross the river. If they asked us to find the hypotenuse, they'd be asking us to find the distance from where I am to the bush over there. Okay. Right. But that's different. Yeah. Okay. Pretty good. We stop. Yes, please answer. Sorry, what does that word say? Um, under the like, it's like, yeah, pointing at right now. Stick. Stick. Yes, I put a stick in the ground right there. Is that like part of the problem? Mm. I it's, just I, I embellish the problem. It's yeah. more just. I just want to say yeah, because I, I can see that I have this device over here where I am, and so I I I had to measure to someplace there, so I just stuck a stick in the ground. Yeah, it's like there. the marker to which you measure. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Could have been a tree. Could have been a rock. You know, God, not not so... not a bear. A bear would move around. It's not a cockroach. Too small. No, not a cockroach. Not a cockroach. Not a cockroach. Scare me so much. Richard, uh, yes. I, I decided that like I will be here on Wednesday for the junior retreat. Oh, that's fine. Because we're it's well, oh, yeah. Well, yeah, because all the juniors are gone. That's yeah. like three of us. Juniors and me and and my mom. Like what? Three of us? Wait, I live in Where are they going? Do you know? It's um, the same place that we went last year. Yeah, Sierra Madre. Oh, is that right? Oh, it's a long, long, long trip. Yeah, it's pretty far. How far? It's a far enough ride. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, sure. Well, I hope you like this. Uh, let's turn off the Zoom. Bye, Noel. Bye, Noel. Say goodbye to Noel. Say goodbye. Bye.